welcome back to our study on the first letter of Peter. I read in chapter 1 from verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each man's work impartially, live your lives as strangers here in reverent fear. So he's laying the reason why we should live as strangers in reverent fear. And it's on the basis that we call on a father who judges each man's work impartially. We will one day stand before God and he will judge our works, judge our efforts. We get a lot in scripture about people who build out of precious stones and gold and silver and others who build out of straw. We're told to store up treasures in heaven for ourselves. And so, so it's not a do what you want now that you become a Christian, but when you build, build properly, do it properly, and do it out of reverence and fear, because our work will one day be judged. Now, we don't know how that's all going to work out. We know that we're going to be given eternity in the presence of God and enjoy the glories of heaven. But he tells us, do what you do here, do it well with a standard of excellence. So he talks about a reverent fear. And the fact that we will stand before God should be a motivation for that, since we will be judged by an impartial Father. Live your life here as strangers on earth. Don't get entangled. He's already told us that with the sins of the world in which you live, and particularly the pagan world in which they were living. But in our world today, be careful of that and live as strangers. This is not my home. I'm on a journey to glory. I'm a citizen of heaven. This world is not my home. And then he carries on now, and he uses uh, a play on words and a contrast between perishable and imperishable. And you're going to see those words come up several times in the next verses. He tells us what God has done in terms of through Jesus Christ and salvation. Let me read. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty ways of life, handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So he's making the point that actually realize what God has done in your lives. This wasn't a little thing for God. This wasn't purchased with silver or gold in the same way that maybe a slave would be purchased or an item would be purchased. You've been bought with an incredible price, the precious blood of Jesus. As we celebrate Easter, we are reminded again of the cross and what it cost God to demonstrate his love to us. The horror of the cross and the value that God put on the blood of his son as he allowed him to carry our sin. So we reminded as Christians, live as strangers in this world because you have been bought with something incredibly pricey, incredibly valuable. There's nothing more valuable to God in the whole world than the blood of his one and only son. He carries on. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believed in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in the Lord. So he's reminding us that the whole plan of salvation was pre-planned by God before the foundation and creation of the world. And he's gone through the creed, as it were, that Christ died on a cross, was raised from the dead, and has been seated at the right hand of God where he's glorified. So it's a lovely statement, creedal statement of what God has done for us. And he said, you have believed in him. Why are we children of God? Because we have responded to the message of the gospel by faith that we believe that God sent his son who died for our sins, rose again, and has now ascended into heaven. And now it carries on, and the emphasis in this next last section is on the Word of God, the power of the Word of God, again, which is imperishable and not perishable. So I read now from verse 22. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, that's the Word of God, so that you have sincere love for your brothers, love one another deeply. 
from the heart. So what he's saying is you've come through the faith and the next step as we live as Christians is now sanctification, the process of God transforming and changing us by his spirit. And we do it by reading the word and obeying the word, the truth. And so the command that comes here is love each other, but not superficially, love each other deeply from the heart. Is our love for other Christians something we do to gain applause or because we have to, or is there a deep, genuine love for others in our lives? And that's the command that he gives in this passage. Now that you're obeying God's word, we'll read God's word and see what it says about loving each other. And we command it to do so, but it's got to come from the heart and not from any other motives. I read on, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. So here he's using the word perishable and contrasting it with imperishable. You haven't been born again by something that is going to fade or, or die. You've been born of imperishable seed. God has put his spirit inside you, and it's imperishable. It's a seed that can never be destroyed. The day you give your heart to Christ, there is something growing in you day by day, and it's imperishable. It's the seed that will well up to produce fruit in eternal life. So it's again the challenge of don't waste time in the things of this world, even the silver and gold. You've been given something imperishable in your heart. You've been born again by this imperishable seed of the Holy Spirit. And it comes from the Word of God. The Word of God is this truth that we believed in, and it's what changes us and brings it to fruition. And now he quotes, obviously, a quote that is used around that time. All men are like grass. And all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord stands forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. So again, we have this contrast. Humanity is like a flower in the field. It's like the grass that withers and is thrown away. But in comparison to that, the word of God endures forever. The word that has been preached to them. And so he's just, again, highlighting the importance of God's word. This book we read uh, as God speaks to us by his spirit on a day-to-day -day basis through our quiet times, our devotionals, through the preaching and teaching of the word on the weekends. It is the word of God which stands forever and is of so much value. And it, it's doing a job. It's doing the work that it was given for, the imperishable word of God, the truth of the word of God. Hold on to it, believe it, read it, study it, show yourselves as a worker approved of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this Easter as we reflect on the death of Jesus Christ, the precious blood of the Lord that was given for us, this imperishable, precious thing that God gave for us to have salvation and redemption. We value that. And Lord, the second thing you've given us is this imperishable word of God to encourage, challenge, comfort, strengthen us and transform us to become more and more like you. We thank you for the seed that has been planted in our hearts. Complete the work that you've begun. We pray in your precious name for your glory. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow.